Scranton, one of the largest cities in the state of Pennsylvania. This city was one of the many energy and manufacturing strongholds that dotted the mountains and valleys of the state throughout the 18 and 1900s. It would see a large rise with the Industrial Revolution in America in the late 1800s, but would later on in the next century see a large fall. This is what happened to Scranton, Pennsylvania. The area that would become known as Scranton, Pennsylvania would be settled in the late 1700s on the banks of the Lackawanna River, located in the northeastern part of the state. After many decades being known under several names, in 1851, its current namesake would be given, named after a powerful industrialist family in the area, and its official establishment would be in 1866. The city would quickly rise in the mining, metal, and textile industries throughout the late 1800s, with easy access to deposits of iron and coal in the nearby mountains. Jobs in coal, steel, iron, and textiles would become plentiful, and in response to the jobs and opportunity, its population would soar, going from over 9,200 in 1860 to over 75,000 by 1890. Companies such as the Lackawanna Coal and Iron Company and the Scranton Lace Company would serve as some of the area's largest employers, and they would serve as symbols of the city's success and prosperity. Products such as railroad rails, Nottingham Lace, and anthracite coal would put the city on the map. It would be given the nickname the anthracite capital of the world due to its large deposits in production, and it also would become known as the Electric City, as it would be one of the first cities to obtain electricity when it would in 1880. While Scranton's growth would remain strong well into the 20th century, it would lose Lackawanna Coal and Iron in 1902. Due to issues with unions in Scranton, the company would move to Buffalo, New York, taking its jobs with it. This loss wouldn't be the city's undoing. However, it would be somewhat of a precursor to its future. The city's population would continue to grow until the 1930 census where it would peak at just under 143,500. While its population would remain relatively stable throughout the 1930s, the 1940s would begin to see a large drop-off in population, with a loss of over 10%. The city's post-war decline would begin much earlier than many cities of the region, due to the city being so heavily dependent on mining as opposed to manufacturing. As time passed, natural gas along with oil would render coal obsolete, and by the 1950s, demand for Scranton coal would decline rapidly. The mining job losses primarily in the 50s, followed by the general deindustrialization of the region in the following decades, would hasten Scranton's decline. The railroads, most notably the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad, would see losses in business and demand with the dropping coal shipments and eventually dropping passenger volumes, with passengers opting for road travel through newly built freeways. From 1940 to 2000, the city lost nearly half of its population. One of the few bright spots that weathered this storm, Scranton Lace Company, would abruptly close in 2002 without warning after a long period of decline due to changes in the industry. Scranton's population losses have mostly leveled off over the last 20 years, sticking around the mid-70,000s range. Much torn up land from the mines and many abandoned buildings serve as reminders of the city's past. Companies such as Rite Aid, which was founded in the 60s in Scranton, showed that some positive economic development could happen in a city past its prime. However, Scranton today mostly exists at a crossroads, being supported mostly by service-based jobs in medicine and education. While it can't be or produce in the same way that it did, how it produces and contributes to the economy of today will determine where the electric city goes from here. Time will tell. Thank you for watching.